Hello there. What is going on, everybody? We've got some controversial and eye-opening new changes to talk about with X-Wing. AMG has finally gotten their most recent live stream to uh, kick off without technical difficulties, and we got a lot of information and clarification on the future of X-Wing. So we're going to be talking about that in today's video. Some of it is pretty hot. Some of it is definitely controversial, uh, but also some of it can be pretty exciting too. So uh, stay tuned. I want to hear from you guys. Also, if you didn't know, we, there's still time left to enter to win the lightsaber giveaway that we're doing for 50k subscribers. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Uh, I think there's an awful lot to talk about, so I'm anxious to hear from you guys. Also want to thank today's sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. Brand new tokens are available. Head over to Luxury Playstyle right now. They are absolutely magnificent. You're going to love these tokens. Also, if you use code Crabock VIP, you're going to save 15%. These make for excellent, 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 excellent holiday gifts. Let your friends and family know. They're absolutely gorgeous. And also, if you spend $35 or more and use code Crabock VIP, you're going to get a free Crabock lightsaber nunchuck token. It's uh, pretty awesome. They're all double-sided, full metal. They're heavy. They're beautiful. You're going to love these tokens, so check them out, and don't forget that code. All right, so... So Thursday, AMG got this live stream going. If, if you guys are new to what's going on with X-Wing right now, you know, AMG uh, took over all the Star Wars games from FFG. Asmodee kind of made that change, said, all right, AMG, these are all yours now. And uh, and and so I, I think a lot of us were expecting that it was going to take some time and, and there, there would be some new changes. And, uh, and now AMG has kind of been working on this and uh, it's been about a year and it's uh, now they're, they're starting to be like, all right, here's some of the things. Now, some of these are locked in and set in stone. Some of these are still subject to change. So uh, we're going to be talking about all of this. Now, they, they gave us a little preview. Uh, they've been giving us little little like piecemeal previews, a little bit here, a little bit there. They talked a little bit about some of the changes that they were going to be planning to make make uh, back in mini extravaganza and, uh, and and it was it was kind of scary at first because like when they were talking about it they seemed like you know like especially Simone Elliott kind of like wanted to brace people I'm like look some of these changes might kind of startle some people and we're like oh my gosh what is it and and it wasn't that much there was definitely some significant things but there was also a lot they left out well, then fast forward to about a week and a half ago or so, they, they didn't get their live stream in that they were supposed to be talking about some of these changes. So instead, they just left us uh, some some rules updates. And that was the big, what we're calling road, uh, you know, random order after dials. And what that basically means, and that's kind of one of the big things that drove a lot of the controversy and the discussion. And a lot of it has to do with the random order after dials. And we're going to talk about that, uh, but I want to I want to hit on all of the uh, the basic the basic changes first, and then towards the end I'll kind of get into uh, my takes on how this goes. So um, so let's let's just kind of uh, let's keep cool heads because I know big changes tend to rattle people a lot. Uh, a lot of us who've been playing games for a long time don't like big changes. If you remember 1.0 to 2.0, there was a lot of head scratching. There was a lot of Angry people, some people quit, some people came back, some new people joined. Uh, it definitely was a big shakeup. And this seems to be doing a lot of the same thing, but in, in different ways. So um, the first the first change for, for 3.0, and, and I'm calling it 3.0. It's not officially called 3.0. I don't think it'll ever be called anything other than X-Wing. Or uh, I don't know if they'll even keep calling it X-Wing 2nd Edition. But it's AMG's X-Wing. It's their edition. It's their version. And so for shorthand, for the rest of this video... I'm going to refer to this as X-Wing 3.0 because I feel there's enough uh, rules changes uh, that are going to warrant that. And you might disagree, but that's just what, how I'm going to refer to it so that we you know what we're talking about. So with 3.0, uh, well, the first thing is uh, there's no more bidding for first player. Uh, so And you're, you're incentivized to use all of your points, all of your 200 points for a list. Uh, they have deficit scoring. So if you only spend 199 points, your opponent starts off with whatever points you didn't spend. So your opponent's going to start off with one point right off the bat. So you really have to use all 200 points. Um, next up is road, uh, random order after dials. So what's going to happen is uh, out after the first round, because the first round you're still going to determine who who goes uh, at the, you know during setup. But Every round after the first round, you're going to set your dials. Once all dials are locked in, once you've locked in your maneuver, then you're going to roll 
to to see who's first player. You're going to be rolling dice. You can roll three dice. Whoever gets the most crits wins. If there's no crits, whoever gets them, or if there's a tie, whoever gets the most eyeballs wins. If there's a tie there, uh, then whoever gets the most hits wins. And 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 uh, and the reason they want to do it that complicated as opposed to just flipping a coin is because of multiplayer uh, games and multiplayer scenarios. They wanted one rule set system that would work for uh, 1v1, which is this, the standard game, and the, another rule set, or in, in the same rule set that would also work for, for multiplayer games. Now, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's what that is. Now, the, it, But the interesting thing is you're going to be, that's how you determine the, the first player. Now, that really only matters when there is a tie for initiative, for pilot skills, you have the same number, uh, the same, you know, ties and in, in aces versus aces, and so on and so forth. Um, now that does happen a good amount. I, there's ties in about half of games. Maybe you know half of the games played have ties, half the games played don't don't have ties. So if you don't have any ties with your opponent, you can. It doesn't matter. You don't. You can skip that whole step. Um, there's also going to be round limits and time limits. Uh, there's already time limits in tournaments. Uh, they talked a little bit about having round limits. Uh, and and at, during Mini Stravaganza, they were saying that that would just be for kitchen table games. But then during their live stream, they went back and said oh, that the round limits would also exist in tournaments. Um, and, and I don't know if they misspoke on that or if that's one of the rules that's locked in stone or not, because I feel like there's been some back and forth on that. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see, uh, just because you know round limits is 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 interesting, and and again, not all games would go to a round limit. Uh, I think it's you know like depending on the, the the round limits they talked about, like you know longer or shorter games, uh, you know, so not like some games are going to go more than fifteen rounds, some games are going to go like much less. Um, they're also getting rid of hyperspace as a supported uh, format. Hyperspace will not exist anymore. Uh, they uh, have said that they did not feel it was doing what it was supposed to do. Um, I'll talk more about that later because I, I, you know, I've got some, I've got some thoughts. I'll talk more about all of these later. Um, uh, but in in lieu of hyperspace, they are going to have more of a standard and extended format, uh, and also possible other formats in the future. Uh, then in in lieu of the normal scoring sheet and how everything is kind of kept track of, they're just going to have a banned and restricted list. Uh, they have talked about a banned and restricted list in in the past, and this was confusing at first because like, well, you already have a document that says if something is legal in in what formats so why have a separate ban and restricted list um i'm still a little it's still a little unclear if you know if they're new if they're just getting rid of hyperspace will there be another like will the points document itself kind of list you know formats and what's le the legality within there it sounds like it won't and it sounds like they're just you know kind of taking that information and putting it into a separate list so when something is banned it sounds like it's banned from all formats as opposed to just one format that's kind of it's what i'm it's i'm guessing that's the the direction that they're taking on how the ban restricted list will specifically work and which formats it will apply to now uh we have some other things to talk about um there's you know with the road thing and this kind of goes along with random order after dials they wanted more kind of more um i guess They've used uh, the term like perfect knowledge, so a lack of perfect knowledge. You, you're not going to know exactly when you're going or when your opponents are going. Um, they they talk a little bit about uh, like cards that allow you to look at your opponent's dial. Uh, a lot of that stuff is all going to be going away. That'll all be gone with the banned and restricted list. They also mentioned Luke Skywalker as a gunner was uh, definitely going to be banned uh, because they didn't like that he let you rotate your 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 turret um, at a, with with no negative. Uh, impact is is what they have said about that um and and uh you know and, and it's and it's interesting because certain things are going to be changed certain things are going to be banned we don't know all the things that are going to be changed how they'll be changed and everything that will be banned really the uh what they're planning on doing right now is is banning virtually everything that lets you look at dials or potentially changing some of it um it, they're not saying a hundred percent uh, there may be something that lets you look at a dial at some point and it might be very, very expensive. Uh, you know, maybe like maybe Snoke will be like the only thing that lets you do that. And maybe he'll be 100 points or something like that. Uh, you know, so, 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 so something along those lines. But they basically the intent with 3.0 is they want dials to be sacred and unknowable. And when they are revealed, they want them to be truly 
uh, a revelation to your opponent. So, um, so that's that's part of the intent there. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk more about uh, tournament play with with 3.0. Um, tournaments will now have scenario play. Uh, we don't know very much about how scenario play is going to work, but it sounds a little bit like objectives. It sounds a little bit like how Armada and Legion have objectives. And and so when you're, so it's not just a dogfight, but they did say that dogfighting would be one of the scenarios. They mentioned having two more scenarios that they're working on right now. It's unclear uh, if, you know, how a scenario is going to be chosen. Uh, and they basically, the intent here is they want you to build an all comers type of list. Uh, and what I mean by that is a, a list that is not necessarily uh, prepared to just dogfight, but a list that is prepared to go after objectives too. And, uh, and, and so, I, you know, I guess, I guess we'll have to really wait and see. And this is just kind of, you know, a lot of this is based on the way that they were describing the methodology, but not the specifics. So there's definitely some guesswork on, you know, exactly what they want you to build your list to do uh, to, to, to succeed in a tournament. But it does sound like that's a, a, a huge, huge change to tournaments. If dogfighting is only going to be one-third of the games in a tournament, then I think that's a massive, massive change. Again, another reason why we're calling it third edition. Um, now, uh, another thing about tournament scoring, uh, you can take notes now during the tournaments. You could never do that before. Uh, and that's going to actually be important because uh, they're changing the half points rule uh, when normally... You know, if I got, uh, you know, if I got a ship to half points, you know, you could get, hey, I can get a score half for that. You know, if I get you down with your shields and, and some hull down, do I, I take that Millennium Falcon down halfway? I don't have to completely kill it. I still get some points for that, right? Well, now, um, you know, there used to be the problem is if somebody had shield regeneration ability and they, they regen back up above half, uh, then at the end of the game is when you do the scoring and... Somebody could kind of snatch those points away from you by healing. Um, that no longer can happen. So what will happen now is as soon as you get somebody to the halfway point, you mark it down. You've scored it right then and there. Um, so even if they, uh, even if they regen, they don't take the points back from you. Uh, now I know somebody's going to be like, wait a second. So if I get you to half and then you regen. What happens if I shoot you again? I get you to half again. Do I get another half points? And I'm pretty sure the answer to that is going to be no. You get it the first time, and then it's done. Uh, the only way you can score more points is if you completely kill them, then you get the the full score. Um, so there is definitely that. Um, so so yeah, regen does not reverse scoring anymore. Uh, and and they did talk a little bit, and they, it was it was kind of vague, so I can't give you exact specifics. But they did talk a little bit about scoring. They wanted you to have like certain minimum scores to qualify for things. Uh, you know, they they don't like the the intent here is that they want you to be shooting at each other's ships. They don't want you to skirt around. They don't want you to take the you know wait until you have the best uh, approach vector to attack. They just want people. Um, attacking and attacking with furiosity uh, because you need to get X number of points to win. They did say, um, you know, that there'd be the amount of ships and the amount of points you gain are going to be more important than just the fact that you win uh, win a game. So like, you know, blowing up one ship and flying away is going to be less good than losing, but blowing up a lot of ships. So you could actually have like a winner, like a top cut that's full of people who've lost, whereas people who've won all their games but did it in a very um, conservative way might not make the top cut because that's how they're going to do points. So again, we don't have specifics on that, but that's kind of part of the philosophy behind that. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, points a little bit too. Uh, points uh, are, you know, I talked a little bit about the change in documents and a ban restricted list. Uh, the points document, uh, they still do have plans to to adjust those, uh, but I, it's not going to be like every three months, or you know, it's not going to be like every quarter. Uh, they, they they don't know. They didn't tell us what it would be. They said it might only be when a new wave comes out. Uh, so that that kind of indicates that uh, it's going to be less less uh, less frequent that points get updated. Uh, there'll be no more t uh, final salvo uh, in in the event of like a tie, and and you know you would just kind of roll dice to see who won. Uh, they're not going to do that. You actually can have ties now, so uh, that is going to be something else. And of course, uh, that it kind of factors into their philosophy of uh, we want you blowing stuff up. So even if you get a tie, 
you know, and again, ties are going to be kind of rare. But if even if you do completely tie somebody on points, if you guys had both blown up a lot of ships before that tie, it's still going to be more favorable on your on your tournament placing. Uh, so uh, there's a couple other things I want to talk about. Now these are the, uh, the other things that are going to because they did say there was more changes, and they've been kind of giving us like breadcrumbs. Uh, they don't want to just give us everything all at once. Um, I have thoughts on that. That maybe they're afraid somebody would say, "Oh, all these changes qualify as a 3.0." Uh, well, here I am. So, <laughs> so you know. But basically, expect more. Expect more. Some of those uh, that are kind of works in progress right now that aren't completely finalized. They talked about those also. Um, so some of the things that they're working on right now that will probably come in, but they're not 100 percent yet because they they could potentially like like basically all the other stuff they've kind of locked in. Those other things now, uh, sideboarding. Is something that they're looking at right now too, and and that that's kind of interesting because you know, other games do uh, a sideboard. Magic the Gathering has been doing sideboards forever. Legion uh, instituted a sideboard mechanic where certain characters can have a sideboard. And what a sideboard is, if you're not familiar, is when you build your list, uh, usually you have some other stuff off to the side, whether that is you know other ships or just maybe alternate upgrades. Like maybe every ship, you know, as long as the points match up, like here, say, Legion does it in a certain way where somebody who has the ability to do it can have another upgrade like they can have they can choose at the start of the game which upgrades they're going to equip uh, out of two for any given slot as long as uh, they're they're billing their list against the most expensive version now it might be interesting uh, to see how sideboards work um, with the whole deficit scoring I'm, I'm interested to see how they do that because if you had two different upgrades you wanted to have, one in your sideboard, one equipped, but one was much cheaper. If you go with the cheaper one, does that give your opponent the points? You know, I'm curious how they're planning on doing that. Um, uh, another thing is, uh, let's talk about when you are at range zero of an opponent. Uh, if you're at a range zero, in other words, you are touching, whether they hit you or you hit them, uh, or, or something, uh, or some other, <laughs> some other way that you got to range zero. Um, there are, you know, there are certain pilots in the game uh, that, and, and there are certain ways that you can still attack people. You know, Arvel, Kryn, Zeb, Aurelius, things like that. Um, well, they want everybody to be able to do that. They want everyone to be able to shoot at range zero. Uh, they said well, with what they're working on right now, uh, it would be like a normal attack without a range bonus. And uh, that that had a lot of questions uh, about, well, wait, what about pilots and cards that do let you shoot at range zero? Uh, the plan right now is to buff those pilots. If they're good at shooting at range zero, then, uh, then they should be better than everybody else at it. So maybe, I would guess, maybe those pilots can get range bonus while shooting at range zero. Something along those lines, right? Uh, and then uh, the last one uh, that's a big one that I want to talk about is um, bumping. When you collide with another ship, when you bump, um, you know you don't you skip your perform action step. Well, they're ch they want to change that to where you still can perform actions after a bump. And what they're looking at right now is a, a limited action, so you can only do a focus or a calculate. Uh, and 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 they they painted kind of a scene where two people are bearing down at each other and and we're very focused and uh, you know and 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 that's uh, something that they're still working on again. So these last few were things that are still in in progress. And so uh, so some of the and and there there still are going to be more. There are still more things uh, that are kind of in the pipe. They haven't told us all of those yet. So that's that's uh, what we know about. AMG's X-Wing, um, and, and I'm curious, you know, what the commu the greater community is going to call it. My guess is it's going to be 3.0. Uh, my guess is it'll be either 3.0 or maybe AMG X-Wing. I don't know. It's but it doesn't. But this doesn't feel like it would be the same X-Wing or X-Wing 2.0 that we knew under FFG. This feels like it's so much uh, that it's a very very big change. So. So yeah, let's. Uh, so you know, I, I'm curious what you guys think. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of the the. I have, I have good. I have, I have. I guess I have positive and negative takeaways from this. And uh, so I want to start with some of the positive uh, because uh, I think there are. Some, I think there's some good things here. First off, while change can be scary, change can also be exciting. Um, if you have a big collection, and maybe you play a lot, and you know, like, look, I love running a tie swarm. But I'm just, I'm tired of it. It doesn't give me anything new anymore. Maybe now it will. 
maybe now it, you'll have lots of new things. You know, especially if they're talk, looking at you know everybody at range zero can attack now, uh, or you don't, or you don't skip, you don't skip your action. Like imagine Thai swarms, you know, like crashing into each other or whatever, maybe even on purpose and still getting to take focuses. Like that's you know there'd be no penalty. For that anymore now <laughs> well i say i mean maybe that's a bad example on uh, how that could be a good thing because that could be a really negative play experience for anybody going up against a tie swarm so uh it, you know again this is part of why that that particular rule is still uh still in 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 i guess in the working phase because it may only be if you bump an enemy ship right it may not be that you bump if you bump a friendly ship you know like that could be one of the things maybe you're not focused if you crash into your buddy because you're worried you know <laughs> something like that um but we'll have to see what they come up with now. Um, but yeah, so so my point is though, change can be exciting, especially if it's a game that you love and you love to play. Um, they're they're not changing, you know, like the the physical components, uh, not much anyway. They are banning cards, so from a certain point of view, um, some of the physical components you want to use, you won't be able to use at least at least in a organized play format or in an official format. Now. Um, I know that there are uh, there's some people who are not thrilled about this and are saying, you know what, I'll just play the old 2.0 rules, and 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 certainly you could do that, and then you can still use your your stuff that is uh, stuff that is banned, and you can still buy go by the old rules. But at the same time, how many people are still going by 1.0 rules? Like when was the last time you saw an X-wing 1.0 tournament? Pro what, what's what, the reality of this situation is when a 3.0, when a new official rules reference guide come out. All the tournaments and organized play events are going to shift over to that. Maybe not on day one, but probably within three months. You know, and and you can hold out, but I would definitely suggest you try out the new rules. I have not played the new rules yet, yet because we, well, frankly, we don't have them all. Uh, so I, you know, I again, I, I I only have speculation based on looking at things. Full disclosure: haven't played this yet. You know, it's it's not final yet. There's a lot of stuff that are still being decided. So. I don't want to get too deep into a rule set that is still being changed and adjusted. Uh, even though there's certain parts they said are locked in stone, like like a random order after dials is 100% according to AMG. I don't actually subscribe to that. Anything is 100% because I am sure if there was enough uh, incentive for them to change it, they would just turn around and change it. You know, I thought X-Wing was going to stick with Fantasy Flight games and that didn't happen. You know, so nothing is really ever set in stone. Nobody's ever really gone, you know. Um, but but there's some other interesting things too. I think getting rid of hyperspace uh, makes sense. Uh, I thought hyperspace was a really good format for when X-Wing 2nd Edition first came out. You had a lot of new players getting into the games like, oh, a new edition? Okay, let me go give that a try now. You know, I can get in with a core set, streamlined rules, there's an app, there's all this kind of other stuff. Oh, by the and they got rid of the app as well, but that's, you know, that... It's not really a rule set kind of thing, um, because it, well, who who even used the official list builder anyway? Um, but getting rid of hyperspace, it, like hyperspace was really good, you know, to get uh, you know established players to play on equal footing with new players who were just buying the black box second edition product. So you know, if, if all I had was a core set, you know, a Y wing and a Millennium Falcon or something like that, then, you know, then I, you know, I, I wouldn't be completely outclassed by people who had gunboats and and all this other stuff. So, so hyperspace was cool for that, and it also gave some list building uh, challenges. And they can still do formats that have list build building challenges, but uh, most people who who played hyperspace uh, were kind of under the mindset that it was it was interesting for like maybe the first couple of games, but then after a while, it's just like okay, this is you know, you know it, it was it was almost like bubble gum that loses its flavor really really quickly. So, like, like the, uh, the what's what's the with the zebra is a fruit stripe gum, you know, like fruit stripe gum. I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried that, but um, anyway, so, so yeah, um, so the hyperspace thing that that makes sense. Uh, having a standard and extended is to me, it sounds like it's going to be the exactly the same thing. They did say that extended might be like more like the wild west. So again, I guess we'll have to wait and see exactly how standard is different than hyperspace. You know, if it's just minor tweaks, well, then hyperspace was minorly tweaked also. So it may be that standard is the only format that gets the banned or restricted list and extended is everything. And and if so, then that seems reasonable, I suppose. Um, it will be kind of interesting for folks that can't get older 1.0 stuff. So I'm curious if, you know, how reprints are being prioritized with all of these new rule changes as and new formats as well. Um, 
So, uh, so other things uh, that I think are are interesting is is the you know definitely the the errata uh, the ability to errata certain cards. So if they're changing a rule, hey, well, people who already did this now they get better at it. I think that's a positive way to to approach things. And uh, and I also like that they're putting thought into taking X-Wing forward. They they definitely, like, I don't think they'd be putting all this effort into X-Wing if they were planning on canceling the game, right? Um, you know, I know a lot of Armada players were initially like, what, you're not developing anything for Armada? And they were going, cr like, super mad, like, well, that's not the case with X-Wing. They're obviously planning on supporting X-Wing for a long time. Uh, why else would you spend this much time and 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 headaches over trying to get like new rules play tested, new new errata for cards play tested, and all this other stuff? So, I don't think you do all this if you're just letting a game, letting a game kind of fade into the sunset. So this is this is definitely saying they have a lot planned for for the future of X Wing. Um, I think new like scenarios are something that will be welcomed by a lot of people. Although I'm not sure that tournaments are the the place like or that. It sounds like this is taking the place of regular tournaments. Like, there will be no more dogfight tournaments. And that, they didn't say that verbatim, but that's what it sounds like to me. So now I'm going to shift into, the, like, the... Like, I like scenario play. I like multiplayer, and I like the quick build stuff. Like, that's, that's fun as an option. And it's... This is a little bit speculative on my part, but it sounds like they're trying to s kind of shift things into... No, no, objective and scenario play is now going to be the tournaments. Now, granted... A lot of tournaments are fan run, so fan run events, people can run whatever they want. But if that becomes the official tournament format is you get one of these random objectives assigned to the table at the beginning of the game, and it could either be a search and destroy, uh, holds the point, a game of like football or that droid or the, you know the Rocket League game they were talking about where you kick the droid across the goal line, or a death match, you know, like that's going to... If that's like becomes the normal for for tournaments, that's such a drastic change that I'm not sure uh, X Wing will feel the same, right? Because X Wing has always like every ship that exists uh, exists for the purposes of blowing up other ships or supporting a fleet that blows up other ships. Whether you're a jouster or a, a turret arc, you know, like a, a ship or a support ship or, or something like that, or, you know, or just the, the big gun uh, or the little gun in swarm type ships, they all exist to play the game that is a dogfight. And so if they're adding multiple, uh, you know, if they're reducing dogfighting to only one third of the competitive scene, I, I I have concerns about that because that's uh, that's more than a fifty percent change. That's a sixty six percent kind of change. You know, you, do you see where I, where I'm coming up with that? So again, we haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. It's just something being to be cautious of. Um, so I have other things that I'm more. So now I'm at the like the middle stage, like this. Oh, I'm not sure how I am feeling about that. Like I'm not sure how I feel about them banning Luke Skywalker, the main character of Star Wars. Now they're not banning Luke Skywalker in his X-wing. They're banning Luke Skywalker Gunner uh, because he goes against the the road system of of dials being sacred. You should have no. They use the term perfect information a lot, and uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about. That that phrase because I'm not happy about that phrase. But uh, but 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 you know if they're gonna just errata cards that lets you shoot at range zero, why not just errata Luke Skywalker? Right, he's the main character and it's kind of cool to have him as a gunner. Why not just give us a different Luke rather than just saying you know rather than just killing Luke? Right, it, it didn't. It people weren't happy about it in the Last Jedi, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, but yeah, so like you know, why just why kill off Luke? You know, uh, and again, that's that's I'm exaggerating a little bit because he's not dead. He's still in his X-wing. Uh, but I would like to see you know a Luke who's just changed a little bit. And I under you know and and I didn't like the way that in the live stream that they talked to us, the the, the viewers, the X-wing community. There were a lot of disparaging remarks, a lot of very condescending language used. Uh, for people, and I'm going to get to that, but let's talk about this perfect information thing first. Um, there, I wonder, you know, why they're you. I, I think perfect information is a term. So basically, what they mean by this is, all right, let's say we're both initiative six or whatever. I know that I am, uh, I'm, you know, I, I won the bid or whatever, so I chose to have 
to give you initiative. So you have to do everything first. So you move first and like, ah, I know where you are. Now I can move and then boost and either get out of your arc or get behind you. I, they did not like that. And, and, and I understand why they didn't like that, but you'd still never have perfect information. Just because I know that I'm going after you or going before you doesn't give me perfect information. I don't know what maneuver you've picked. There do exist some cards to let me look at your dial, uh, but those aren't like mainstream cards. Those are kind of like fringe cards. I will actually go out and tell you I have never once looked at an opponent's dial, at least that I can recall. I don't, I don't think I've ever equipped an upgrade that lets me look at somebody else's dial and actually used it to look at someone else's dial. And I've been playing X-Wing since Wave 2? No, it's so Wave 3, X-Wing 1.0 Wave 3. I've been playing X-Wing for a long time. Not once have I ever looked at somebody's dial. So to me, now granted, you might do that more often than I do. Um, but I, but that's just not my play style. I don't want to look at your dial. So at least from my perspective, that's like a fringe thing. That's like them saying, Connor nets are broken and are destroying the game. So because Connor nets are broken, we're making all these changes. You know, and, and that's kind of how it feels to me. Like this is something like I've, I never even used that or, you know, I don't, is it even used that widely? And it makes me think that like maybe they, you know, in, in their playing, somebody said, hey, look, you know, and again, maybe in certain metas and certain local scenes or, or whatever, like that's very, very common, but it isn't from my perspective. But then again, that's, that's I'm just one dude with one perspective. So, um, so like that, that much is, is, is kind of weird, but like it's, it's still, it's still not perfect information. You can't see everything. You know, if you can look at one person's dial, you still don't know what action they're going to take. You don't know if they're, where they're going to barrel roll, you know, like, so you don't know what action they're going to take. You don't know if they're going to hit you or not. You know, there's, there's so many things. It's, it's, it's never perfect information uh, or, or almost never. I guess there is probably the case, like if you're ionizing somebody, then that's perfect information, right? Like, I know you have to go straight. I know you're ionized. You know, like, to me, that's perfect information. That's really the the negative play experiences that, that I've had in X-Wing all revolved around people running, like, max ion, uh, ion cannons. Like, all one of my first, uh, well, I think maybe my third tournament playing X-Wing in, back in first edition, I ran against the build, it was all Y-Wings with ion turrets. And that was a negative play experience because I could not, I had no decisions to make. Couldn't even, couldn't plot dials. Um, you know, I, I had been stressed at the time and back in 1.0, you couldn't take any actions. Uh, at least now it's, they've changed ion a little bit. So it's a little bit less because it's blue straight, you know, but, but still you, you, your opponent can just be like, well, you're going to fly yourself off the board now. And so like, to me, that's a negative play experience, but even now that's not done very much. Right. So I'm at, you know, like, and I guess maybe that's a better analogy. It feels like AMG said, Hey, you know, we played against somebody who ran all ion cannons. Ion is a broken mechanic. Uh, so now we're going to change things to, you know, now anytime you do a straight blue maneuver, you can do any other maneuver you want. You know, so, <laughs> you know like I, I feel like it's, it's a little bit overcompensation, but but yeah, perfect information was a word they kept using. I feel like it's an exaggeration because you have a good guess, right? That's usually all you have. When you have initiative, you have a good guess. To me, that's pretty far from perfect information. But then again, they're trying to use language to reinforce 3.0 uh, and, and why they're making these changes. Uh, but on to like condescending language. They kept referring to X-Wing as, as uh, X-Wing like 2.0 as it is right now as a tower defense game. Uh, Will Schick uh, did this a lot, and, and 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 like, again, did you watch a game where people were playing very competitively, trying not to give up points and waiting for like the right opportunity to go and strike and then and then go away? Like, I feel like that's the, one of the worst analogies I've ever seen because it doesn't resemble a tower defense game hardly at all. Uh, but you know, I don't know. Maybe he was watching a pro against somebody who was very bad, and you know, like an, one ace. One really skilled player playing like a you know a two or three aces against the Thai Swarm, and he was just you know dismantling them one by one, and so he thought it looked like a tower defense game, but like it was so condescending, I thought for for him to kind of he said things like if you love playing tower defense games, well then try this new one because this is gonna be different, you know like and it was a lot of like things where he basically said X-Wing maybe look guys I know X-Wing 2.0 or what or X-Wing as it is you know currently 
might be the game of your dreams. Tough. You know, is basically, and he didn't say tough exactly, but it was, uh, in, you know, in, but you could hear it. You could hear it in, in, in their voices in this live stream where I think there was frustration. I think there was anxiety. And I think he, you know, there was a lot of negative comments in, in the chat, um, a lot. I mean, this was a very controversial live stream. And I think they dug themselves in deeper, especially Will Schick, by... Uh, by by kind of talking down to the audience, uh, you know, he's, and I think the idea was like, well, we're doing it, and it doesn't matter what you guys like. It, it, who cares? We don't need you. We've got lots. Of, we're gonna get lots of new players, you know. Uh, and, and that's another thing that kind of annoys me about a lot of this is the the goal was to. Uh, <laughs> I, I've said it, it felt like applying a random aspect to to planning your dials and knowing when you're going to move like that was that to me x-wing was always that was the skill portion and the luck portion comes into the attack the the you know the dice when you're rolling dice when you're attacking that's your luck portion and of course there's ways to mitigate that but the ultimate mitigation is good flying and so you know where you're gonna you know when you're gonna fly you so and and a big part of that's like all right he goes first if i do this oh i'm gonna bump him so hold on let me do this now they're taking making that into potentially randomized and every round and you don't even know so you have to plot maneuvers without knowing so there's a, a luck aspect to that it's not 100% luck because as some people have pointed out that also takes skill because not only do you have to plan a maneuver for if you go first you have to plan a maneuver for if you go second and so you have to account for more possibilities um, but it's still random and because it's random there is inherently luck involved where there wasn't uh, you know, or there was much less luck before. You st either way, you still don't know what somebody was planning on their dial. You usually didn't know before anyway. So, you know, so they're adding more luck to it. And, and, and I feel like they're trying to, you know, re reduce the skill requirement. What, what they have used, they've changed the language in their live stream. They said they wanted to raise the skill floor uh, or lower the skill floor. I'm sorry, lower the skill floor. Well, to me, that's the same as lowering the skill ceiling also. So it's, you know, but again, that, that's language that reinforces a 3.0. So there was a lot of, of that where they would say something in just, a, just the right way to kind of reinforce what they were going for, which I understand. Um, but the problem with, I guess, their focus is they didn't like that a, a new player isn't going to beat a veteran. Like they, I think the goal here is they want a new player to come in and to be able to beat a pro player, and uh, and you know, frankly, I don't like that idea that much. Not not that not very much. You know, and while of course it should be possible, I think that's where you get your your dials. Um, I and I also think that when a pro player is playing a new player, he should take it easy on them. And that doesn't apply to only X-Wing. That applies to 100% of the games that exist. And not just tabletop games, but board games and sports and any type of competitive event. If you have somebody new that's coming into your hobby, go easy on them. Teach them. Probably let them win the first time or even the first two times because it's fun for somebody to win their first game because then they can learn more and they're, they're going to leave with a smile. This is just basic teaching 101. So whoever taught AMG X-Wing must have crushed them. And I'm wondering if some of the FFG guys, you know, were like, all right, we're going to show you this game. And they just, they curb stomped them, you know, and they're like, well, clearly this game is too hard. So let's dumb it down a little bit so that we can compete also. You know, and I'm paraphrasing. That's that. That's you know, I'm, I'm making a little bit of a joke of it, but that's kind of the takeaway, right? That's kind of the takeaway is is they want new players to be able to come in and compete. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that they're, I, I don't think that they're going to be doing new players a whole lot of favors because one of the big things they talked about is, well, well, you know, in the past, you know, you you could do all, you could do this like the, under the old rule set. You know, if you knew you were going to go second if you knew you were going to give um you know initiative to your opponent you knew that you were moving after and you could build for that and it gave you an advantage we don't want that all right and i'm like okay that's strange and they talked about when you would only move into attack when you had the advantage they don't want that and i'm like that's also strange fundamentally like why is that you know why is that bad for a dog fighting game for me to attack when i 
feel the time is right, right? Like, I don't understand. Like, they want you to attack when the time is wrong? Like, that's... I, I just... I don't understand, you know, the language they use to, to describe this because there should... Like, it, it sounds to me like all they want you to do is to take your ships and just and just do this. They just want you to just smash your toys into each other as fast and furious as possible. And I actually hurt my knuckles doing that. You're going to break your ships if you do that. Um, you know, so... So I like I'm like that just seems like they're you know that's why I use the term like dumbing down the game because their focus and what they describe that they envision they like they want people to play a certain way a game where you can play multiple ways they would just want you to play a certain way um, you know it's like look look we're gonna play chess but we want you guys only to move the pawns okay don't move anything else like but we can move all the other stuff you can but we want you to only move the pawns right so it's 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 like that. Like they, they want you to just dogfight. They want everybody... I think they just want everybody to joust. All right? Um, they used... On multiple occasions, they talked about a scenario under the old rule system that somebody could build for something and it would give them advantage. And they didn't like that. I have an issue with that because building a list for an advantage is a foundational principle behind X-Wing. And not only behind X-Wing... Build, creating a build to give you an advantage for your strategy is a founding principle behind 100% of tabletop games. Uh, that you, you build a list, and you know, maybe the only game that you don't like customize your, your characters or your, your ship or whatever, it would be like something like Marvel Crisis Protocol because like Captain America, you, you can't give him anything else. He is exactly who he is. So, you know, that's where I go back to like, oh, well, they they got all these quick build cards, and they want to do an emphasis on quick builds in the future. I, again, this is speculative, but based on the language they're using and then the direction they want to take this game, and not liking people building a list for an advantage, are they going to go to quick builds only? So you can't really build a list anymore. You know, like I like I, that's what I'm 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 curious about because I mean that's. That's more than a 3.0 change. That's a whole new game, you know. And 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 so, and and again, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad. Like this 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 new way to play could be lots of fun, but it's not X-wing. It's not X-wing Second Edition. It's not FFG's X-wing anymore. This is AMG's X-wing, which they they've take ownership of that. But uh, but it it feels like it, at a minimum a new edition, at a maximum a whole new game. You know, and what would you, let me know in the comments what you would call it too. Like, because there's more changes coming. There's more, we don't even know about everything that they have, like that, that is coming. But, um, but like, what, what do you guys think um, that, that they would call it? Would, would you call it TIE Fighter? You know, I don't know. Um, but the last thing, the last thing I think that is strange, and this is like, I feel like they need PR people or somebody to kind of talk for them a little bit. It was Will Schick was, I think he was he was very very annoyed in this live stream, and I don't know if he's got stuff going on in his life, and you know, and of course, you know, he he could have, so you know, I don't want to I don't want to attack the guy, but but you know, he kept saying we need to take X Wing back to its roots. We need to take take X Wing back to its roots. I don't think a single change that they've mentioned here, with maybe well maybe the exception of removing hyperspace, but. You know they're replacing it with something else. But I don't. But really, these changes don't, in my opinion, take X Wing back to its roots. Um, X Wing was always strategic. X Wing always had people building for an advantage. X Wing always had people attacking when it suited them. Um, you know they don't want you to be able to like blow up a ship and then fly away. Um, you know, and so like I get the whole like you get more points for the more stuff you blow up. I think that's a positive change, but. But all this other stuff about taking X-Wing back to its roots, like its roots didn't have random order a a after dials. That's that's not back to its roots. Adding scenario play, only one of which is dogfighting, that's definitely not taking it back. He, he says they want to take it back to its roots as a dogfighting game. But then, like 20 minutes later, he's like, oh, and by the way, yeah, in tournaments, the, most, most of your matches won't be dogfights. What? I thought you said you wanted it to be a dogfighting game again. So I, I'm I'm really confused as to the changes that are being made, the philosophy, how it's actually going to happen, and why they're using the language they're using. Um, you know, 
again, it's 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 a it's it's a frustrating time. So I know a lot of this probably sounds salty, and uh, and I know you know there's going to be some of you who are looking forward to these changes. There's going to be some of you who are skeptical. And there's going to be some of you who are probably like throwing your hands up in the air saying, forget it, I'm done. You know, and, 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 and everything. And it's okay to be upset. Um, you know, you, you can leave comments. We can talk about it on Discord. If you're not already in my Discord, we have links down in the video description below. We're family-friendly Discord, but you are allowed to, you're allowed to voice your opinion. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to say you can't talk about AMG. I'm not going to say you can't disagree with these rules and all that stuff. I know there are a lot of communities are getting like frustrated with it. You know, it, it, we can always make a, you know, an X-Wing 3.0 channel to specifically talk about this stuff, which I'll probably do soon, maybe even today. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just a very, very interesting time. And I would say if you are skeptical, nervous, cautious, think back to 2.0 when that was coming out. There were a lot of people who, some things we didn't understand, some things weren't as clear. I think the conversion kit option was a cool option. Um, I think 2.0 hit a few hiccups. And, uh, and and I happen to know about some of them, like that happened behind the scenes where it kind of like kind of tripped. And, uh, but but I think I think 2.0 was was fine. There's some things that it should have done differently, but but it became the norm over time. And as will this. And, uh, and, you know, by this time next year, we'll probably all be playing 3.0. And, you know, and some of you might not be, and maybe some new players will. Maybe there'll be more, you know, multiplayer formats. So I, I, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So, uh, so yeah, X-Wing 3.0 is, uh, is on the way. No date for when this all goes official uh, just yet. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's going to be that's gonna be interesting. It's going to be real interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still a little salty about Luke being banned, and and, and it's strange because I, I've never run Luke. I, <laughs> I'll leave you with this. I always thought that Luke Skywalker Gunner was really expensive, and he was just a, he was kind of a crutch for new players. If you're new to the game, you're you're not gonna fly very well. Hey, you know what? You can put like, what, uh, you know, a seventh or and uh, you know, a huge port like. More than almost a whole, more than a whole ship, you can spend for a single upgrade that just kind of helps make sure you don't move, overshoot somebody, and have no shot with your main ship, right? Which would usually be the Millennium Falcon. Like that was the idea. It's like, look, I don't want you to like have half your list be all in this one ship, and because you're a new player, you screwed up. It doesn't even get to take a shot now. And so Luke helps that, but he also costs a ridiculous amount. So that was the balancing factor. Um, a lot of people initially looked at him, thought, "Hey, he's crazy strong," and I'm like, "He's not that strong." If you're if you if you fly correctly, and you're you know usually when you're flying something like a Falcon, you're kind of trying to skirt the outside with your turret pointed in. You're trying to circular strafe, kind of more or less. Uh, then you don't ever have to rotate your turret to begin with. So, you know, if you're if you're good enough, you can save all those points. And then put a different gunner on there. There's some really great gunners. Like, hey, you get to attack a second time. I'm like, I love it, love it, love it. You know, like, I'd much rather attack twice, you know, uh, for, for cheaper. Uh, but but I like that Luke was there for new players. Uh, so that they could learn the game without, like, having a... Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to scare somebody off more when they like, oh, I moved this way. Oh, I don't get to shot. Oh, I, was, oh, I don't get to shoot again. You know, I'd rather, you know, them have a handicap, kind of. Like, look, you can run Luke. It costs a little bit. Hey, you get to shoot me. Now that you're getting the hang of it, if you want to free up a lot of points in your list, you can drop Luke, and now all of a sudden you can add a whole nother ship, almost an A-wing, you know, and go. I always thought that was kind of like the point of Luke, you know, this big, expensive crutch for new players. Um, and so, what you know, if, if they think Luke is too counter to their system, what if you just raise those points? What if you raise them up to 60 points? You know? Uh, or, or just change him a little bit, you know, like make him still cost an action or maybe gives you a stress or, you know, or he gives you the rotate arc and it chains into a red focus since Luke uses a force, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just, there's just thoughts to me like that. You didn't have to do that. Again, I don't run Luke anyway, but I think having him there is cool. New, new people who get into these games love to have the iconic characters in their builds and have having taught X-Wing, Armada, and Legion, and all of these games at conventions, new players 
love to play as the iconic heroes, and so banning one of them, even though it's it's in a you know a crew type format or a gunner format, um, just just doesn't sit right with me. You know, I don't know, and that's a weird thing to get hung up on because I'm not going to run him anyway. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's just weird. There's, again, there's a lot of stuff to process, so it's okay if you're you know if you're gung ho for for all of this. If you're kind of mixed, like you like some things and you don't like some other things, or if you hate the whole thing, whatever. It's it's okay. You, you know, feel what your your feelings are valid. All right, guys. I'm gonna talk to you guys later. Uh, again, big thanks to Luxury Playstyle for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out. Get your tokens. They have brand new tokens. I just did a whole review on on the new tokens. They're freaking awesome. You got Strain. You've got uh, you got um, a Cloak. You've got Evade. Or, or, or not Evade. We've got Evades already. We've got Evade Focus Calculate. Um, you've got Deplete. You've got Ion. You've got Stress. And the Times 2 Stress on there. They're freaking awesome, man. They're really awesome. Check them out. Use code Crablock VIP. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are absolutely amazing. Always remember, if you're going to play out in the rain and you are made of fire, bring an umbrella.